Hello, welcome to TechQuest channel. In this video, we will see what are the causes of hemolytic anemia and different types of hemolytic anemias and the blood test done to identify the cause of hemolytic anemias. We will just have an outline of blood test. We will have more detailed videos on each blood test to classify them. Welcome to TechQuest channel. This is for the tech by your tech. According to the hemolysis where it occurs, it can be classified into intravascular hemolysis or extravascular hemolysis. Intravascular hemolysis is the destruction of RBCs in circulation with the release of cell content into plasma. Direct membrane degradation causes the RBCs hemolysis. Extravascular hemolysis in the spleen, a normal 8 microns RBCs can deform itself and pass through the 3 mic microns opening in the splenic cords. RBCs with structural alterations of the membrane surface cannot pass through this network and they are phagocytosed and destroyed by macrophages. There is other classification of hemolytic anemia. One is inherited that means by birth they have a defective gene which causes the hemolytic anemia. One or more genes that control RBC's production are faulty. This can be the problem with hemoglobin or cell membrane or enzymes that maintain the RBC's. Abnormal cells break down in circulation that are removed by spleen from the circulation. Examples we will see one by one. Sickle cell anemia is a serious inherited disease. Abnormal sickle or crescent shaped RBC's are produced by bone marrow that last for only 10 to 20 days in circulation. The bone marrow cannot make enough to replace these RBCs. Thalassemias. Bone marrow produces lesser amount of normal RBCs and more of RBCs having abnormal hemoglobin which get hemolyzed fast. Hereditary spherocytosis. Abnormal spare shape or ball like RBCs are produced by bone marrow. The RBC membrane defect cause this RBC is more rigid and hemolysis occur in short lifetime. Hereditary leptocytosis or ovalocytosis. Like hereditary spherocytosis, the RBCs are oval or elliptical in shape. These RBCs are not flexible as normal. They get hemolyzed in shorter lifespan. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. RBCs are missing an important enzyme for their normal function. When the RBC come in contact with some substances, they hemolyze due to unavailability of the enzyme. Pyruvate kinase deficiency. Low level of pyruvate kinase enzyme, the RBCs hemolyze too easily, causing low RBC count. Acquired hemolytic anemia. These type of hemolytic anemias are not hereditary. They are acquired due to the patient condition. The RBCs may be normal, but some other disease or factor causing the body to destroy RBCs and remove them from circulation. Immune hemolytic anemia. The immune system destroys the RBCs. There are three types. One is autoimmunotic, second one is alloimmune hemolytic anemia and drug-induced hemolytic anemia. The immune system makes antibodies to attack own RBCs with unknown cause. Half of the hemolytic anemia cases are autoimmune hemolytic anemias. Certain disease or infection can cause the risk of autoimmune hemolytic anemias such as lupus, cytomegalovirus or hepatitis. There are two types of antibodies produced in autoimmune hemolytic anemia. The warm antibodies that are active at warm temperature like the body temperature. Cold antibodies are active at lower temperature when the parts of the body, hands or feet are exposed to lower temperature, these antibodies become active. Next is alloimmune hemolytic anemia. Antibodies are produced after blood transfusion due to incompatibility or hemolytic disease of newborn can cause alloimmune hemolytic anemia. Drug induced hemolytic anemia. Certain medications can cause reactive that comes hemolysis of RBCs. Examples are penicillin chemotherapy medicines and anti-malarial medicines. Mechanical hemolytic anemias. Physical damage can cause RBCs to break down faster than normal. Examples, change in small blood vessels and artificial devices used in blood circulatory system. 
identification of hemolytic anemia and cause for hemolysis totally depends on the lab reports. We will see the lab test one by one. First is reticulocyte count. Reticulocyte count raises when increased level of RBCs hemolysis. Hemoglobin level decreases when more hemolysis and less amount of RBC production to replace them. RBC count is decreased that indicates the hemolysis of RBCs. MCV mean corpuscular volume when increased hemolysis occurs the newer RBCs are produced to compensate by the bone marrow because the newer RBCs are much bigger than the normal RBCs. Example is the reticulocyte. Peripheral smear. The morphology of RBCs can give more detailed diagnostic value for the cause of hemolysis. Coombs test. Coombs test can be used to identify the immune mediated hemolytic anemia. Cold agglutinin test can identify the presence of cold antibodies in the patient's serum that, that is causing the hemolysis. Heptoglobin. Levels are in decreased in hemolytic anemia as they get attached to free hemoglobin after hemolysis of RBCs. Bilirubin. After hemolysis, heme group in hemoglobin converted into unconjugated bilirubin. The rise in total bilirubin and unconjugated bilirubin indicates the hemolytic anemia. LDH lactose dehydrogenase is present in all tissue including RBCs. So elevations are consistent with hemolysis. Osmotic fragility test calculates the proportion of hemolysis when the RBCs are subjected to place in a hypotonic solution. Osmotic fragility test is done to diagnose thalassemia and hereditary spherocytosis. Sickle cell preparation. It is a screening test to identify if sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease is present that causing the hemolysis. Hemoglobin electrophoresis can give more detailed information about abnormal hemoglobins. G6PD. Decreased level of G6PD enzyme level can oxidize hemoglobin causing the formation of Ains bodies in peripheral smear and result hemolysis of RBCs. Bone marrow. Bone marrow smear can give a lot of information about RBC production and morphological changes in erythroid series. Urine hemoglobin, presence of hemoglobin in the urine indicates the increased hemolysis. Urine urobilinogen, increase in urine urobilinogen level also one of the indication for hemolytic anemia. Hepatic disease and biliary obstruction can also cause the increase. Urinary hemosiderin. When hemoglobinuria occurs in severe intravascular hemolysis, the hemoglobin is reabsorbed by renal tubular cells in the kidneys. The tubular cells log off with hemosiderin pigments. This condition is seen in PNH. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos.